Hello and welcome to the German Guy Reviews. I'm the German Guy. And welcome back, my friends, to another edition of Kingdom Hearts, a retrospective. Last time, we won ice cream because we are such a nice guy. And I believe, besides that, nothing of significance happened. So let's just continue. Terra meets up with a very young Hercules, who has been ambushed by some unversed and is too untrained to stand a chance. After saving his bot from destruction, young Herc wonders if we are here to enter the games in the arena. Or as Phil would call them, the games. I gotta spruce this place up for the game. Did someone step on his toe during the recording? I welcome here to the games! The half-god then returns to his never-ending training, hoping to see us soon at the Colosseum. Terra thinks for a moment and concludes that finding out how strong he really is could not be so bad. Shortly after, Terra is approached by Hades, who, because he is the god of the underworld, has pretty much read the script. My name is Hades, Lord of the Dead, God of the Underworld, yada yada, how you doing? Hey, let me guess, you're trying to put the kibosh on the darkness inside you. Am I right? Of course I'm right. He claims that he can show us how to conquer the darkness inside us. All we need to do is to enter the games and sign a contract with him. Tick tock, kid! How could you, Terra? You already have a Dark Master! Xehanort's heart is going to be broken. He promises that if the darkness should overcome Terra during the battle, he will be there to save him. But of course, Hades has different plans. Upon entering the games, Terra's first enemy is Zack from Final Fantasy VII. He has been given special powers by Hades also to defeat Terra. Having familiarity with being controlled by outside forces, Terra realizes quickly what's going on. He defeats Zack, bringing him the cheers of the invincible crowd. My guess is that Phil just downloaded a bunch of cheering sound files from the internet so that the warriors in the arena could know what it would be like to have an audience. And I don't blame them. I do the same thing all the time when I have finished recording. I might be delusional, but I'm happy. Hades goes away pissed, leaving behind an even more pissed Zack who can't believe someone like him could have controlled him. Kid, you are way too hard on yourself. He is a god after all. The young man gives us a big thank you for our help and says we are exactly what he always imagined a hero would be like. Well, I'm no hero. Trust me. Are you kidding? Listen to those cheers, man. Exactly, Terra. Why do you have such a big problem just trusting the voices in your head? While Terra is traveling through space, he starts to look at Aqua's good luck charm, thinking about their friendship. Because of this, he doesn't realize that he is flying right into a swarm of unversed. You might want to keep your eyes on the road, Playboy. What, you think we're gonna crash? I haven't decided yet. Not occupying yourself with any distractions during driving counts as much on Earth as it does in space. He fights them off only to be abducted by an alien ship minutes later. Is he the one? Yes, Grand Councilwoman. I've confined him until we can determine what he is. Well, then your civilization must have just now discovered space travel, considering that humans populate like... 95% of the universe. 
Terra wakes up only to see that the ship has been overrun by Unversed. He then uses his keyblade to free himself and fights the invaders. Dr. Jumba watched us this whole time and is very impressed by our fighting skills. He says we have to help him escape and save his experiment from destruction. The next time he runs into Aqua and Ven, he needs to ask them if he can borrow their good luck charms. Cause this is getting ridiculous with how often this guy ends up working with or for villains. Someone in the fate department is out to get him. The young Keyblade wielder agrees because he believes that this powerful creature the Doctor has created could help defeat the Unversed. We find Experiment 6 to 6 in his prison and naturally Terra expected more. Stitch, the name of the weapon Yumba created, gets free and steals our lucky charm. Terra screams that this was a gift by his friend and he won't let get him away. The Doctor laughs at us saying that a concept like friendship is lost on 6 to 6. Destruction is everything his program allows him to do. The bioweapon then drops the trinket, making Terra wonder if maybe deep down this creature actually does want friends. Can't you see? It's misunderstood. All it really wants is some friends. Oh, this fucking thing bit me! Oh, it bit me! Oh, oh you fucking piece of shit! Dr. Jumba doesn't like that someone is doubting him, so he decides to prove his infallible genius to us by waking up Experiment 221, Electrical Fluffy Monster Thingy, or Sparky, but I think my name is better. After that, Stitch returns and Terra thinks it might be because he wants to know what a friend is. He says he can't explain it, but if you have friends, you can feel it. Stitch then runs away and the alarm goes off. Terra decides it's time to leave and he promises that he will make things right again. Dude, this is like the fifth time you said this. You know, you have no right whatsoever to be upset with Aqua and Arrakis for believing that there is a growing evil inside of you when everywhere you go you leave a path of destruction and sadness. Well, looks like you folks are free to go. But don't you set foot in the state of Florida again. Fine. There are plenty of other states that are happy to have us. We then arrive in Neverland. This time it's not on Captain Hook's ship somewhere in the middle of the ocean, but the actual island. Terra hears two men screaming and he runs toward the danger. It's Captain Hook and Smee, surrounded by Unversed. But this time I have learned from my past experiences. I am not helping anyone anymore until that person can prove to me that he has received sainthood from the Pope or has cured cancer. Hook, not in the slightest thankful for our help, says we should not expect any share of the treasure. Aye aye, Captain Dickbutt. He orders his first mate's me to quickly move the treasure chest away from here before the light makes the unversed come back. Hearing this, Terra offers his help to keep the light safe from a boy named Peter Pan who tries to steal it, according to the captain. You know, on the one hand, I like how helpful Terra is. On the other, if he would just ask a few questions, a lot of tragedy could be avoided. And also he would realize how very suspicious Xehanort is behaving. I keep on wondering. Is this Kingdom Hearts making a metatextual critique of itself? You know what? It is now. I decide that it is now, so it is. Because it makes the games to me so much more cooler than they already are. Terra, Captain Hook and Smee meet up in the Skull Rock Cave. The Captain and Smee walk away saying they have business to take care of. Soon to be multi-villain henchman of the month replies, he will be waiting here until Peter Pan arrives. Which is exactly what happens. The boy that never grows old shows up and his two fairies take the treasure. They run but accidentally trip, revealing that the chest was full of gold. In that moment, Terra realizes he has been tricked. So why did you not find it ominous that they said that there was light in a chest? The light is something like the force. It surrounds us. It's inside all of us. Why would it be contained in a stupid wooden chest? He apologizes to Peter Pan, but the latter has no hard feelings anyway. In fact, he had quite a lot of fun. 
The Green Goblin wants to know where Hook went and Terra thinks it might have something to do with a shooting star they were talking about. Peter is sure they only could have meant Tinkerbell, so he flies away to help her. A great number of Onvers appear, and after that Hook and Smee return, having captured Peter's fairy friend. Terra releases her, but before Hook can draw his sword, an old friend of his shows up. That sound! Jeez, that is the loudest f***ing clock! Hook shits his pants and runs away. Afterwards, Terra tells the Lost Boys they could put the things most precious to them in the chest and that could be their treasure. The boys think that that's a great idea and with that, Terra is on his way again. On the pathway to another world, Terra sees a bright shining light that engulfs him. When he opens his eyes, he finds himself on Destiny Island. He walks around for a bit and wonders if the relationship with his friends could ever be fixed. Terra then sees a very young Riku and an even younger Sora, playing, laughing, running around on the beach, not having a care in the world. So basically everything that they are going to do for the next 10 years. Until the depressing and cruel adult world comes knocking at their door, ripping them from the safety of their crypts and destroying everything they have ever known and loved. Seriously now, I want to be a child again. Sora spots a boat in the distance to pick them up and bring them home. Wow, this is like the first time their parents were actually interacting with their children's life. Riku then notices Terra and outright asks him if he is from another world, since he has never seen him before. Well, absolutely flawless deduction there. The Keyblade wielder admits this. Screw the world order, I guess. And they have a little talk. Terra wonders if the boy ever feels imprisoned in such a small world. And Riku tells him it is said that there once was someone who left the island and never returned. So what? All you ever think about is how to get away from this place? Is Destiny Island the Kingdom Hearts equivalent to suburbia? Riku explains he wants to leave the island to become strong, so he can protect the things that matter. Seeing that this kid has a strong sense for justice, Terra decides to allow him to become a Keyblade wielder one day. <laughs> Not the first time you are a very bad judge of character, my friend. He summons his Keyblade, showing it to Riku and letting him touch it, saying one day, when he is ready, he will find him and there won't be any borders anymore that could contain him, thereby promising freedom beyond comprehension. Ah yes, I remember when I was a kid. Waiting for my Keyblade to show up in my hands. Or oh, my letter to Hogwarts. Or oh, my Pokeballs. Or oh, my Digivice. Or oh, my lightsaber. Get me out of this reality! Riku promises never to tell anybody about this conversation and Terra suddenly realizes he too has things to protect. Xehanort contacts us again. He tells us Ventus has discovered the secret of his origins and has returned home. He claims Ventus was furious and could do something terrible to Arrakis, so we have to stop him. It turns out it was Ventus who needed protection from Arrakis. Luckily, we were fast enough to stop our old master from killing the young man. Ericus commands us to step aside, but Terra refuses. The old man says this means he will share Ventus' fate, which puts him to tears. Strangely, Ventus says his master is right and that he should kill him, but Terra doesn't listen. Windboy gets knocked out and thrown into a portal by his friend, helping him to escape. Terra, seeing no other way to defeat Ericus, completely gives in to his inner darkness. After a long, exhausting battle, Terra realizes what he just did. But his mentor blames himself, saying he failed and that he never should have raised a keyblade against his students. Before either of them says sorry, Ericus dies, leaving Terra in tears. Xehanort shows up, asking why Terra wastes his time on useless feelings like remorse. The only way to make it now even more obvious would be to tattoo evil on his forehead, Jared Leto style. And knowing Terra, I'm pretty sure he actually has to do that. 
Xehanort tells him that he must accept darkness in his heart and let it take over. Terra is still confused, so he finally lets the cat out of the bag, revealing his evil nature. Read my lips, Terra. He's an evil man who does evil things because he's an evil person. He tells us that we will find him on the Keyblade graveyard, on the same deserted planet we found him the first time. There, he says, he will kill Aqua and Ventus. He summons a giant ball of darkness, destroying our home. Determined to save his friends, Terra arrives at the Keyblade graveyard. And... And this is where we have to stop the cassette, reverse, and watch again, but this time from Ventus and Aqua's perspective. So, until next time, the German guy out and auf Wiedersehen. Terra. Kind of earthy, but all right. Now